Hello again everyone, we are Gaming by Gaslight, and welcome back to another episode of Stellaris. When we last left off, we were working on building up another colony, it would seem. Uh, we were also working on our current colony, which still has... You know what, it actually occurs to me, I should hire a governor. Uh, none of these are actually at all useful. Well, except for this, well this guy's cheaper. And that's really all he has going for him. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, it does help. I probably should have picked him up sooner, all things considered. Uh, especially... Now this guy's level 4. Actually, you know what? I sh I'm going to swap these guys around. I'm going to give the cheap one here. Because he's still going to level up as a result of upgrading buildings and stuff. But this guy will speed things up even faster. I mean, extra happiness, less construction time, faster blocker time, rem or removal... It's all going to be good. Everything's going to work out just fine for our empire. And, uh, uh, that's right. We're also working on whether or not we would like to, I guess, go to war with these guys in order to System assimilate them into our collective. Because no one really wants to, no one wants a defensive pact. Uh, no one wants, I mean, they're all, you're a... A harmonious collective. They're both harmonious collectives. Actually, what is a harmonious collective? Uh, let's see. They're collectivist societies where the citizens are devoted to the state without the need for coercion. They tend to keep to themselves but are not averse to trading. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, collectivist and individualists are being renamed in the Special banks patch. Complete. And it also looks like they're... I, I have, I, I've, I've been talking for a while, haven't I, about the whole, ooh, I should put all my ideas together and put it into like a proper video and post it somewhere where Paradox might see. Uh, it actually seems like in general, or they, there has been a post that uh, it does seem like some of their plans of sectors are actually similar to what I've been talking about, like the whole idea of making them a little bit more like estates and just in particular making them so that uh, factions and ethics divergence are not inherently bad, which I think that's a move in the right direction. Let's see, what is this? Continue studies for the massive skeleton? Ah, yes, yes, yes. It's just, a, it's just a skeleton. Nothing too exciting. Or is it? I feel like at some point, maybe there's something with that skeleton that should end up turning out to... Like, it should turn out to have some kind of cool storyline built onto it, like an actual explanation or a way to figure out how the planet or the, the creature warped in from another dimension or whatever. System survey complete. I think that would be interesting. Research complete. Ah, excellent. Basic combat rules. Synchronized defenses. I mean, that's not bad, especially since it seems that spaceports are stronger than they used to be. Uh, what does this do? Shield hit points. That is also pretty good. Um, but I think we're going to go for this because building a power hub would be pretty useful. In my personal opinion. Uh... Don't have a bio lab yet. I'm, I'm gonna work on upgrading all of this. But I do want a. I want to make sure we have a significant level of power. Oh, and you're also unemployed. That sucks. Actually, is there anywhere I can move you in the time being that'll get you to be doing something useful until that finishes building? Because you're you're reasonably happy and all, but what am I actually building right now? This. Yeah, it must be this. I'm building that. So I'll just have you sit there for the time being. And uh, I'll also go ahead and build another robot. Oh, and this science ship is not doing anything, so I should probably pick him up. Oh, did I miss it? No, I, I did do the research. Okay. All right, so back down here. Uh, you're still only level three. Ah, uh, 30% risk is okay. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? All kinds of, what is this anyway? Sensor profile, mid-sized vessel, right. Complete. I don't think there's much I can do with that at this particular point in time. Let's see, is there anything bigger than that size 20 world? Uh, there's a size 25 alpine world. Which I haven't studied. Uh, but an alpine world, let's see. Oh, I don't even know what its habitability is apparently. Well, well, we'll colonize over here. I think this seems 
pretty reasonable. Let's see, where would be a good spot to plop this thing down? Uh, let's see. Hmm. I guess right here, because then we could get bonuses for... Oh, wait, 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 what's this? Minerals and high gravity. Okay, that's okay. High gravity is perfectly fine. Algol Prime. Alright, so we are running a bit of a deficit, but that's okay. For the time being. Uh, we'll work on improving that, by the by. Oh, hello. Ah, more life signs. So that would be pre-sentience, if I recall correctly. That's always cool. Oh. System survey complete. Significant amount of debris. Interesting. Ah, uh, so much cool stuff. This is why I like empty universes. Because, I, I, like I've said many times before at this point, and I've probably ranted on excessively, is I... I, I j Ooh. Hello. Amazingly, while conducting crew, science vessel, picked up life signs, asteroid, burrowing worm-like creatures. Intriguing. Wow, this is a kind of a boring system. It has an asteroid belt, and that's pretty much it. All right. Well, that is useful. Oh, hostile fleets. Sapphire lurkers. Uh, let's see. Sapphire lurkers. So it's it's all bad stuff in this general part of space. Okay, so survey this, and then this, and then get the heck out of here. Man, these are they're looking pretty powerful. Which means if we blew them up, we'd probably get some moderately good stuff. Like, this thing has got 2,000 power. Like, is this their nest or something? It's gotta be. Maybe. Possibly. Alright, more influence. A visitor center, I like, I like the sound of that. I like the sound of this as well. The lowered ship upkeep. Of course, as far as I understand, I don't think when you upgrade your ships, they get... Like, these bonuses added to them. They, uh, they only get added on new ships, which is kind of unfortunate. It'd be nice if these bonuses got added retroactively when you upgraded ships. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure they don't get added. But I'm gonna build the visitor center first. It's not gonna be particularly useful at this particular point in time. But, that could change. What, what kind of world do you guys live on? Ocean worlds. I should check out your your stuff. I mean, they are inferior in terms of tech power, but I wonder when, like, when it says tech, does that only count their military tech? I would assume it does, because this is basically talking about power, and the only thing that really matters when it comes to power is military power, because there is no culture or tourism or religion or any other aspects. I hope such things get built into the game eventually, because that would be really fun so you have some non, uh, non conquesty reasons for doing things like it would be really nice if you could like especially for pacifists it'd be really awesome if you could just assimilate empires entirely passively just through like a combination of i guess migration and like having a stronger cultural influence because to some degree that that has been a strategy that has worked a little bit like there's no as far as i can recall from what I what little of history I know I don't think any great empire has ever basically conquered the world solely by like cultural osmosis or anything but I, I feel especially in a modern era like the one we live in today instead of fighting wars of people that's probably when you think about it what the future of warfare is really gonna boil down to is who ends up is this in our space? Yes, it's still in our space. It's sometimes hard to tell just looking at these things. But anyway, yeah, like the future of, like, war, it's all ideological to a certain extent in the future, I think. Because proper wars, like in the olden days, they're just not profitable, I don't think. Not like they used to be, anyway. Ooh, I could bring up a ship. Ooh. Large ship. Situation. Well, hell yeah. First, I'm gonna bring that thing up. We're, we're, I mean, what do I look like? Some kind of crazy person? We're, we're digging that shit up. I'm not gonna leave some ship hanging out down there. I, I mean, I mean, it could be infected with uh, brain slug people. That, that would be bad, I'll admit. But on the other hand, it could be an uh, awesome kick-ass ship. And there is no way in hell I'm giving that up. All right, then. What is this? Granfium. Ten percent hull points. I like it. We're gonna start researching. We're gonna research the hell out of that. 
Uh, let's see. Do we have... Oh, there are some Teldar crystals there. Uh, anywhere else. Nope, oh, just there. So, basically, I now have a choice. And I think... The, I think we can all agree the proper response would be to probably put a frontier post here. Probably. And I could just build an ocean world as well, but... Uh, or I could build another thing on this continental world. That would also help. Or just build more robots. Uh, building more robots is also a, a valid a valid option, I would say. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna build some more robots. Some more robots. I still haven't got a bio lab. It disappoints me. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna waste time on that, or uh, I'm not gonna you know upgrade that because like, this naturally. I don't know the way I play. I feel if if it naturally has society research on it, then I turn it into a bio lab. If it naturally has something else, I build something else on that. I should have built a power hub there, maybe. Eh. Oh well. Anyway, let's let's keep going, shall we? Uh, we are also burning energy here, but that'll be fine. I mean, once we're done upgrading everything. Uh, yes, we're saving that. We, we should also start working on clearing these remaining tiles eventually. Ah, it's so great. Our empire is progressing nicely. Ooh, a strange... Oh, it's never one of those... You know, considering the frequency at which we find these weird skeletons that have warped in from another dimension... I, it, it would be really awesome if... Actually, you know what? Here's a thought. It would be interesting if there's like a little hidden modifier where every time you got one of those events... Oh, also I actually have Teldar Crystals right here. But it would be cool if every time you got one of those skeleton events, it added like a hidden modifier. And then once you got that event a certain number of times, and then you finish it, it unlocks a special research project that lets you do something else. I don't know what that something else would be, but it'd have to be something like really, really cool and possibly involve interdimensional travel, and maybe have a chance of failing and spawning the unbidden, which would be particularly useful if you either turned off uh, the crisis events, but then you later decided you did want a crisis to show up, because then you'd have explicit control over when it could happen, or something like that. In fact, that'd be actually a really cool way to do it, make it so that there's alternate ways to spawn crises, especially because there is a... I I'm sure I've heard that they've they've changed it like way back in 1.2 where there could now be multiple crises per game. But then I hear other people who say no, it's 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 not in the patch notes anywhere. And it's been a while since I've read the various patch notes, so I'm I, I'm not entirely sure myself. Uh but yeah, there's there's that. And um Yeah. But that way there'd be a way to have multiple crises, and that way especially the big draw for me, I think, would be so you could turn off having crises randomly happen, but then you could kind of force them via event. Of course, the AI crisis already kind of works that way, but in general, from what I hear, and I've never actually gotten the AI crisis to properly spawn, but it that one seems to be really weak because it relies entirely on you or the AI really mistreating your synthetics and then having a whole bunch of them alone on one or more planets. Yeah. So... <laughs> That could be problematic. Ever gigantic skeleton. Situation log updated. All right, you can go ahead and research that, and then continue making your way down the arm here. All right, so far so good. What well, this could be a nest, actually. Now that I think about it, a nest of the crystal people. As this is a pulsar, is it not? That is a pulsar. You're a pulsar, aren't you? Uraway. Yeah, you're a pulsar. Pulsar. Blah, blah, blah. Complete. Let's see. Masterful display of engineering. The team under Science Officer Blank. I, I still haven't done anything with these nameless robots. Has managed to gently raise the derelict ship on Propus 1 to the gas giant's upper atmosphere. Despite its age, the ancient cruiser is in remarkably good condition, and we have restored power to its systems. No trace of the, orig of the original crew remains, but we have brought over our own and commissioned the ship into the fleet. Sexy as hell. What is this? What is this, baby? What are you, my good sir? You're a derelict thing, but what are your details? All right, so only hyperdrive one. That's a bit unfortunate, but you have a disruptor, you have point defense, you have lasers, you have a whole bunch of shields, and it's just a cruiser, and ah, it doesn't have any small uh, 
small things, but assuming these guys have missiles, and at least those point defenses, it, it could... I, I'm still thinking about the possibility of maybe, maybe going to war with uh, these people. Also, if you hear any squeaking in the background, that's just my dog. He's chewing on one of his little toys. You can actually, sometimes, when he chews it, it almost sounds like he's trying to play a song of some kind. Isn't that right, Ace? Good boy. Um, hi there. System survey complete. Now, you're not trying to tell me something, are you, Ace? Maybe? No? Nope. Oh, he's wandering off. He was kind of staring at me for a moment there. Self-aware logic. Now, this doesn't say that it unlocks anything else, but I'm almost certain this is needed to unlock synthetics or something. I feel like it is. Was, wait, wasn't self-aware logic even like a dangerous tech at one point? I feel like it was. But I could be mistaken. I'm going to research it anyway, because I, I feel like it's important. But I could be mistaken and possibly crazy. It would not be the first time. Alright, the real dangerous part about having all this on the edge of my empire is, of course, the fact that it's at the edge of my empire, and if these guys decide to be dicks and build some kind of frontier outpost, or... I'm actually tempted to close my borders to them, because then they wouldn't be able to actually do anything over here. But I don't want to kind of reveal my hostile intentions just yet. Well... Hostile-ish. I mean, I don't really mean them any real ill will. I just kind of kind of want their lands for my own. And is that really such a crime? Established. Excellent. All right. All right. That's the uh, crazy skeleton thing. Is it not? Is that the... Where is it? Where did you find that? You found it? No, not there. All the way down here. And there's also several systems that I skipped around here for some reason. Uh, which, now that I think about it, let's uh, let's backtrack and dimension. Oh dear. Um, let's look at that for uh, in a moment. Uh, but first, this sounds potentially dangerous. And anything involving dimensions makes me think of the unbidden. But anyway, let's see here. Subunit never made it all the way to AA two three six one nine to study the anomalies surrounding it. The ship, along with science officer and crew, blinked out of existence as it was navigating the debris field, and then reappeared minutes later. Blank reports that they found themselves briefly in some extra-dimensional space. External viewpoints, or ports, revealed that they were surrounded by countless ships of alien design, suspended in a seemingly endless void. Before the crew could get their bearings, the vision abruptly faded, and they found themselves back in regular space. However, roughly half of the crew are missing. Science officer Blank speculates that they may have been selectively trapped by some unknowable mechanism in that strange space. Well, that's kind of spooky. Oh, hello. Oh, you would like a non-aggression pact. It's going to cost me influence. I suspect it will. Between a war... Eh, sure, why not? I don't intend to go to war with you anytime soon. So, I guess agreeing to not go to war is a good thing. All right, I can do that. And it's not costing me influence, apparently. Unless I accidentally hit disagree. Which wouldn't surprise me. Also, that event that I just got is going to spawn a new science ship in a moment. Spoiler alert. Uh, yes, we're building more robots. We're going to upgrade that. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have just yet. Ah, we're making enough minerals. We're going to be able to build a spaceport here soon enough. Uh, and of course, we also need to immediately start building a whole bunch of robots here. Which is very, very critical to the continued proliferation of our species. We also need to re Oh, we're, we're not making nearly enough for my like- Ooh, science output. I like that. Maximum number- God damn it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's- That just disappoints me. Incidentally, what is the ethics divergence over here? Ouch. And I can't afford to uh, propaganda broadcast. Damn. That's unfortunate. Oh, hello. Ah, here it is. Dimensional Drift. Missing members of subunit A088's crew, thought lost to the Dimensional Rift, have reappeared. They hailed us from aboard an unknown vessel, not entirely dissimilar to our own science ships, 
idling close to where the subunit A088 originally experienced the dimensional disturbance. They claim to remember nothing of their time outside our dimension, aside from a vague awareness of having been away for some time. They wish for nothing but to return to service under Science Officer Blank and intend to surrender their ship to Gaslight Authorities. Very well. Safety of the Gaslight people hinges on their destruction. But I'm not going to do that. Because actually, as far as I know, and I can't really do anything with this science ship, unfortunately. Oh, I can upgrade it. I'm kind of scared that it'll get rid of its specialness. As you can see, it's a very special ship. And I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, whether or not this other dimension that they speak of would possibly be, say, the Unbidden Dimension. It could be, but maybe not. Ah, the Gagasi Civilization. Let's see, Civilization on Bakangji in the Hoshfer system. All right, advanced into an Iron Age. Good for them. Good for you. I'm proud of you, you little guys, you little scamps. And we're running out of energy again. Oh God, we're actually doing poor on energy. Like, we're doing much worse than I thought we were. Much, much worse. This is, this is awful. Absolutely dreadful. System survey oh, wow, we're finally getting some precursor stuff. That, that baffles me, it's crazy. I'm wondering, are we losing so much because our pops are using energy instead of fuel? Or instead of food? I'm not sure. Man, and given, uh, given how much we're actually producing, I'm kind of surprised that we're running such a massive deficit. Ah, here's, here's the problem right here. This is neutral. But yeah, we're running a massive deficit over here. So we're, we're definitely going to turn all these food things into power plants, I think. Except for these. Those are, of course, going to become mineral things. Because, you know, obvious reasons. We obviously want to spend as much as we can to make ourselves as best as we can be. This is going to be awesome, though. We're, I, love, I love this empire that we've got going here. I love this. I love the whole exploration thing. And and eventually, I imagine, the whole diplomacy and interacting with a bunch of other species is going to be fun too. But I, I feel, overall, like the core of Stellaris, I think, almost requires a nearly empty galaxy. Just so you have more room to be able to have all the fun stuff. But then again, if they had more events, kind of like the, the events in Crusader Kings 2 or Europa Universalis... Or, you know, any other Paradox Grand Strategy games that didn't didn't rely on anomalies, but just, like, every month or so, you know, and you could or tick and maybe give you an event. You know, maybe something to do with the civilizations that you're dealing with. Maybe some, like, a border incident. Other things. Which would also really play well into adding, like, a culture, tourism, religion, uh, a ethics divergence, which uh, is going away. Like, the just plain ethics divergence modifiers apparently going away i believe in the banks update as well so there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming up we, we'll have to wait a little while for it but there's a lot of cool stuff and i know that's going to be awesome but uh yeah even if some bits of stellaris feel like they're lacking now they will no doubt be really fleshed out and made really awesome uh, in the future but while we're dreaming of all these things for the time being it's time to wrap this episode up, so until the next time, thank you all for watching, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video.